All right, it's time for the Prime News Legal Dream Team. Joining me tonight, attorney Eric Richmond, litigation attorney Kelly Sainan, and criminal defense attorney Nicole DeBoer. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Our first story, whatever happened to the rights of a victim? That's what I'm wondering after hearing this one. A high school cheerleader in Texas says she was sexually assaulted by a fellow student at a party. The problem? He's a football basketball player, and she's a cheerleader. The girl refused to cheer for Raheem Bolton during a game, and she's the one who then gets kicked off the squad. Her parents sue, the lawsuit thrown out, and an appellate court upholds that decision. Bolton later pled guilty to misdemeanor assault charges. He admitted it. Dream Team, how can a school get away with this, punishing the victim of an assault, Nicole? She's the victim, yet he gets to play ball and she doesn't get to cheer, Nicole. It's really pretty unbelievable, and the language that the court used is a little surprising. What they were indicating was is that by her not cheering, she was substantially interfering with the duties of the school or with what the school expected of her, and it just seems very surprising. It makes, us, it makes me wonder, quite frankly, if there's not something else in the record that we haven't been informed about that, that yeah, made maybe, them come maybe to how many decision. baskets? Maybe how many baskets the guy scored? Eric, this, this outrages me because someone is a victim, okay? She's the victim. The only thing she did was not cheer for the guy who assaulted her. That's all she did. But she doesn't get to be a high school cheerleader, yet he gets to be a high school basketball and football player, Eric. That's just wrong. I, yeah, it is. And I think you can analyze this case and even set aside the fact um, that, this guy, that this guy was found guilty of a crime. Regardless, she has this right, this First Amendment right that the Supreme Court recognized going back to 1969, recognized that she has a First Amendment right to not cheer or to cheer, so long as it doesn't, as your other guests just explained, materially affect or get in the way of the operation of the school. I don't see how this behavior does that. It doesn't even come close. I think the, the court got it wrong. Court got it way wrong on that one because, I, and I don't even know how it gets to that level of going to court. How the school would even think of trying to go after the victim and not exactly. the perpetrator in this case. All right, more trouble with teachers in our nation's high schools. Marco Alvarez was arrested in September. Why? The Texas high school dance teacher was accused of molesting dozens of children, and get this, taping those crimes. In fact, authorities believe they found up to 70 victims of the 34-year-old. Alvarez was put on paid leave while the school investigated. An emergency hearing was held yesterday to fire him. But paid leave? I mean, how long should this investigation take, for goodness sake, Kelly? You look at the videotape for two seconds, investigation over, right? I absolutely I agree with you. There's no way he should be getting paid. He should be getting fired and he should be charged criminally as to the fullest extent of the law. There's no way they should let him spend one more day around kids and they definitely shouldn't spend taxpayers' money to pay him a salary. And I understand, Eric, the, the, the presumption of innocence that everyone has that's in our criminal courts and, you know, you don't just want to go firing people based on accusations. But this is a case where the investigation could be pretty darn simple, okay? He videotaped what he did. And you don't have to judge anyone's credibility. All you have to do is look at the videotape or talk to one of the investigators who looked at the videotape, right? That's correct. And he's in jail right now, so it's kind of academic, you know, that he's still getting paid. I don't think that really matters. That obviously is something that's, that, that sounds awful on its face. But once this conviction goes through, which we all think is going to happen, then this will all be taken care of. And, and looking back on it, it'll be something silly, but procedurally, that's something that the school obviously has to do. You know, what, what are the, what are the he admitted his Go crimes. ahead. I'm sorry. He admitted his crimes. He admitted to the investigators and to the police that he did this. He said, I've been abused in the past. I have a problem. So he's admitted this. That alone should be enough reason for the school board and everyone else to say he's not getting paid. So I disagree respectfully that it's academic because it's insulting to all the victims. It's insulting that a teacher can get away with this. And the idea that he's in jail, he should be in jail. Absolutely. But he shouldn't be getting paid. Nicole, I mean, yes, that's true. Go ahead, Eric. I'll let you finish. Yeah, I was just going to say it's the difference between a, con a confession and a conviction. This is obviously a vile and despicable character as par based upon the facts that have been presented so far. But until he's convicted, then we have to wait, uh, unfortunately. It's part of the process. Well, yeah, and understanding the criminal court presumption of innocence, my problem is with the, the school dealing with him and doing an investigation that, in my eyes, is, is very, very simple. All right, more of the Dream Team. A teenager is killed in a horrible crash, but his parents are forever even in more heartache when they find out months later that not all of their son's remains were returned to them. 
There was an old brain in the jar just floating around, you know, and it's kept for medical research unknown to us. Welcome back to Prime News and our legal dream team. Now, this has got to be a parent's worst nightmare. Losing their son and then finding out he was buried without his brain. Andre and Carisha Shipley's son, Jesse, was killed in 2005 in a car accident. They buried him, but a few months later, they got disturbing news. Jesse's friends saw his brain during a tour of the medical examiner's office. It was a pretty chaotic situation. You know, the kids were flipping and everybody was all furious and stuff like that. The feelings is very, very tremendous. It's tremendously extreme, difficult. It is very, very difficult. The parents are now suing, saying they never approved this and don't want any other family to have the same thing happen to them. Back to the legal dream team, Eric Richmond, Kelly Sainin, and Nicole DeBord. Uh, Nicole, this really sounds like grounds for a big lawsuit here. You cannot take the remains of someone without their approval. Absolutely. I mean, this is a circumstance that no doubt is extremely upsetting. You know, on the other hand, it's going to be a difficult decision, I think, for the court because as bad as this situation is, uh, it's hard for me to determine exactly what the family is after. If they're after a public apology, a policy change, and perhaps those things are in order, the question becomes whether or not the court can write this kind of circumstance with money and with taxpayer money at that. Yeah, I don't know if you're going to write the circumstance, Eric, but what you can do is hit them in the pocketbook to make sure that it never happens again because they'll remember that that's true and that's actually the only way corporations or cities or municipalities actually understand when somebody's been wronged and when they've done something really horrific like this and in this instance it's not just what they did it's how they did it they never informed the family they never disclosed to the family that they were retaining the brain of the 17 year old child and they kept it there and then they denied it so the way that it evolved although the state and the city has this obvious interest in performing autopsies in types of cases like this you gotta let the family know no, you gotta specific. let the family know. You gotta know. tell them. Absolutely. Absolutely. You gotta let the family know. They had a whole burial with him, and then they had to exhume him and then bury him again. Yeah. That's, that's awful, and that shocks the conscience. Outrageous. Now, should a bride be compensated for humiliation? Well, that's what one New York newlywed is claiming. The wedding photographer took pictures of Sarah Bostwick in her underwear getting ready and then posted it on the wedding website. Boswick says the pictures never should have been taken. She says she wants damages for emotional injuries, including post-traumatic stress. But the judge tossed that lawsuit. Do you think she has a case here, Kelly? I mean, you're, you're, it's your wedding day, and you tell the photographer, don't take any pictures of me. Not only do they take pictures, they post them on the, on the, wedding, the photographer's website. Well, that sounds really bad, but let's think about it. If a man is in the room when you're getting dressed, snapping away, it's a female, away, it's a female photographer. Time, you tell him. Female okay, well, photographer. Okay, well, that's the time you say stop taking pictures. You know when someone's photographing you, when you're standing there in your underwear, you say stop. And the bride had the password to the videos and the pictures, and she disseminated it knowing that there were pictures of her in her underwear. So now to seek this and say she's embarrassed, and she's actually saying that she was fearful that she'd be attacked based on people seeing in her underwear, I think the judge did the right thing. Throw it out. All right. Kelly affirms the decision. Thanks so much to my legal dream team. Great job tonight. All right. Thanks, buddy.